everyone, and welcome to the writer's class. Oh my goodness, that's a good job. I, I know, know right? Okay, I am going to do a little victory dance with like one finger is just going up. Out. Why should I do that? I squint. I, I like she torn her ligament in my in her hand. hand. Yeah, now her hand it. and her ankle know. match. They both have torn ligaments. I know, right? So it's like I have a cross thing. Like I had some whiplash or something, but I did. All right. Yeah, I'm Jay though. And I will know now. Oh my goodness. And I forgot my lipstick today. How about that? Well, then you know what? I'm right handed, y'all. So it's a little hard to do stuff. <laughs> yeah, totally. I, told her, right I was like, all you need to do <laughs> is have it, put it on a circle, right? Get it like, I'll put it in a circle and you just kiss the paper. And she tried to tell me that's not going to work. It didn't. It, didn't. it wasn't going to work. I didn't even try it. You I was like, well, no, way you try it first. And then when she had lipstick like all over the time, I was laughing at her. Because I was like, no, everyone knows that's not going to work. Everybody. Maybe just not well, no, did. I was like, like I was going to do the whole interview like this. Really? Were you? Yeah, like, like a goldfish. I can't. I can't take it. Okay. All right. You know, when you're in life, guys, with pop poetry, y'all, sometimes we have something wise to say, or is it just about co-op? You have to read to find out. And I thought the voice was bad with other life lessons. And I thought being grown up was easy. If only I would need a memoir and burst uh, the Widow's Debt series and... And Born Coffee, yeah, all of those are available on Audible. Y'all get them so you can be like, sweet, like making the leaves and and, and listening yeah. to the book. Yeah, do oh that. my goodness, making the leaves, leaves right? Yes, yes. yes. high five. Those are just y'all. Yeah, cover still out here. No. But um, and if you want to see the rest of yeah. our eleven books, so six plus eleven equals seventeen books that we have. Go ahead, James. Tell me you know. See all everything your ladies are doing at www. And I thought ladies dot com. But y'all aren't here to hear about us talk about our books. Oh, I really wish you were. But you're, oh, you're here to hear about our wonderful guest. Wonderful guest. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, well, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me to your show. My name is Bernadette Walsh. Um, I write women's fiction and paranormal romance. I kind of go all over the gamut. I have some hot, sexy uh, paranormal romances about a family of Irish witches. Um, and then I've done some more serious uh, books, including my latest, which is called um, Johnny Be Good, which is about uh, a, family, um, uh, a family dealing with um, alcohol abuse. And then, um, so anyway, so I do a, a bunch of things. Um, I've been writing for about 12 years and um, I'm a mom, I'm a lawyer by day. And what else do I wanna tell you? Um, I used to be an Irish dancer. Oh, that? yes, I was major, major Irish dancer. Um, so I've actually incorporated some of the Irish dancing in some of my books. Um, How? And, yeah. Well, I mean, okay, so first, I, I think everyone's going to want to know, how did you find time for writing? Because you seem like you have a very busy schedule. So how do you find time to write? You, you know what? You, you can't find time to write. Like, I, I, I always talked about writing a book, and I've said this before in some of my podcasts. I always talked about writing a book. And when I was single and I, all I did was, you know, take care of myself, of course, I never wrote. But after I had a baby, and I was a little older when I had a child, so I was um, 40, I had um, a new husband, a baby, a full-time job, and I still was talking about writing. And my husband's like, you just turned 40. Like, when are you going to do it? You know, you're going to be 100? So he bought me a computer and he said, here, here it is, go do it. And so I was like, wow, maybe I should try this. So I did a lot of research because I'm a lawyer, so I like to do a lot of research. Mm -hmm. And I joined a local writing group. And I started writing. And my first book, um, Gold Coast Wives, was a light, fluffy, airy, contemporary romance. And a lot of it was based on my own life. The, one, the protagonist, um, Kate Ryan, who was a lawyer in her 40s with a child, right? And, but her husband, unfortunately, was playing around and everything else. So her mm -hmm. life was a little bit more dramatic than mine. Um, so then I, I, I got actually a publishing contract with Lyrical Press. Um, and they... Um, and then I worked on um, a paranormal romance. I said, well, that was fun, a contemporary romance. Let me try a paranormal romance. And so I started writing about a family of Irish witches. And that turned into a four book um, deal with Lyrical Press as well. Um, then I decided, 
oh, you know what, maybe I can do this on my own. So I actually got my rights back and became self-published. And I like that because it gave me a little bit more flexibility in terms of um, what my next role was. Because a lot of times when you're with a publisher, they want you to keep doing the same thing. And what my writing journey has been is that I write what I want, when I want. And so I have written some really, really serious books. Um, I wrote um, actually one of my recent books, A Safe Distance, is about the um, pandemic. A lot of people say you shouldn't write about the pandemic, but I didn't care. I wanted to write about the pandemic. That's what was in my head. And then I flipped again to another paranormal romance, The Reluctant Witch, which again is um, about, about a family of which two, two sisters who are witches um, here on Long Island. So my books have really run the gamut. Um, it's been a great ride. Um, I absolutely love what I do. And I don't have time to do it though. I just find, <laughs> I find time. I think, I think that is so true. I, I think it's true sometimes you, know, you just don't the, have time you make it considering all the people that we have interviewed and all the people that uh, are professional writers and that's what they do as a full-time job it pays their bills how do they all say the same thing they love to do it but they don't have time <laughs> <laughs> and that's all they do right well look I'm at the stage where I'm clearly not paying my bills I have a job that that does that I wish my fantasy is to quit my day job and write full-time but it's funny, I've thought about it because right now writing is an escape from my real life, from the stresses of my real life. So that's why when a lot of writers like complain, they have writer's block or, you know, it's so hard to get published or it's hard to get readers. Like I refuse to let that negativity into my world because this is Bernadette's escape, right? It's not, you know, Bernadette's second job. And so while I take my writing very seriously, I refuse to let all those other concerns steal my joy. So um, as people whose uh, job is writing, uh, it becomes just like a job. Well, I mean, it's not a fun job. It's a fun it's job, right? What do they say? Find a job that uh, you'll love and you'll never work, work a day in your life. life. It's right? true. Something like that. Um, so another question. I have a question because wow. you said the word podcast. So uh, what is your podcast? And um, I want to know how to get on it. That's uh, not important. You just put me like right, off, right in the middle of my sentence. Oh, go ahead. Finish your sentence, dear. Anyway. Well, I started, I started a podcast um, because everyone was telling me as a writer, you have to promote, you have to promote. So I tried to like, you know, I tried to do Twitter and I'm just a bad tweeter. I tried to do Facebook. I wrote some blogs. I don't know. I mean, I still write blogs just because I enjoy it, but I don't know if anyone's reading it. But I thought about like, what do I like to do beside write? And I like to talk. So I started um, a podcast a couple of years ago. I've had about 75 um, guests at this point. And I've had some like pretty heavy hitters. Um, Kristen Higgins was on it, a couple of others. Um, and so it's called Nice Girls Reading Naughty Books. And it's about um, just interviewing um, authors of women's fiction and romance. Now, I am, unfortunately, I'm kind of like, um, because my day job as and my life is getting more crazy, I've had to put my um, my podcast on hiatus for a little bit. But I, I think I will try and pick it up again. But I mean, I'd, maybe I, we can sneak in one more before I, I turn it off completely. So um, if if we want after this, we'll we'll organize a, a, a meeting for absolutely. Oh yeah, no, I, I'm definitely down for that. Um, yeah. right. Let's do it. Yeah. We have to do it quick because I think yeah. I turned it off. I turned it off because I didn't want to pay for it anymore. But um, I'll try and turn it back on. But um, the it was just you know, it, and I, I think the podcast will be something I turn on and turn off. Um, a, you know, from time to time. I actually started like several years ago before there were like tons and tons of podcasts. So I really didn't know what I was doing. I just kind of you know found my way. Kind of like yeah. the writing thing. I never really knew what I was doing. I just kind of found my way there. So. Yeah. So okay. let's, talk about, people. let's talk about editing. Um, how do you find your editors? Do you do your own book covers and where people can find out more about you? Okay, well, um, editing, I sometimes I, I um, get an editor, uh, you know, I paid for an editor a few times, but because I'm a lawyer by training and I've been a lawyer for 30 years, like editing is a lot of what I do. So I found out sometimes like I was founding my own, my own errors. So I don't know, I at this point, I don't do a lot of, um, I don't, 
unless I, you know, I'll do certain sections where I want more constructive editing, but like line editing and finding mistakes, I generally just do on my own. Um, in terms of covers, I used to pay for someone to do my covers and recently my covers kind of felt like a hodgepodge and I wanted it to be consistent. So I actually scrapped all the covers that I paid for and made my own through book brush. And so now it has a, like a common look and feel. So I actually like it a lot better. So, um, wow. so I'm really turning into a one, one woman band. Yes. yes. Well, that, that's what self-publishing will do for you. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. We'll definitely do it for you. Or, or you figure out who you can pay to do it. What, whatever. Right. Yeah. So you learn, how to run the, you learn how to be a publisher. So right. You learn how to, to run the publishing house. So then when you pay someone, you know what you're paying for. I just right. want to say, I feel like this is a natural marriage. You're a lawyer and right. now you run a bit of your own publishing career. By the way, I love the fact that you love to write and you love to talk. Which is just both skills you need to be a good lawyer. Right. Just I like, don't you, feel like you just were born and they were like, boy, lawyer. Lawyer. Well, lawyer you know what? There's so many. I was surprised when I first started writing, especially romance writing. You would never think, like, I thought I'd be the only lawyer in the room. No, about half the women in that room were lawyers, ex lawyers, and recovering lawyers. So um, a lot of people who I think otherwise would have been like, you know, English majors, but because maybe they wanted to earn a living or something <laughs> they became lawyers but their passion was probably more liberal arts and i know mine was as well so so where can people find out more about you your book and your podcast well, you can get a cup, a copy, a free copy of Safe Distance if you go onto my website, BernadetteWalsh.com, and that's going to be available until, until October 31st. Um, you can also get the first book in the Devlin Witch series. That's always, that's a perma-free, and that's available everywhere. Um, so you can find me, at, if you go to my website, BernadetteWalsh.com, then you'll be able to link to my, um, my Twitter, although I, as I said, I'm not the best tweeter, but I'm there. Um, and I also have a Facebook fan page. And then there's also a Facebook fan page for Nice Girls Reading Naughty Books. Fabulous. Thank you so much for taking time out to come on the show today. We really appreciate it. We definitely do. Jade, you want to wrap us up? Absolutely. You can find out everything your ladies are doing on www.andithoughtladies.com. While you're there, take a moment, get down to the bottom of the page and see the charities that we probably support. Maybe you can support them also. We thank you in advance for that. And just remember, y'all wisdom is all around you. If you're open to finding it and accepting it. So peace and love you guys from Will Nona and Jade. Bye-bye. Oh yeah, thanks for listening.